الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا قوا انفسكم واهلكم نارا وقودها الناس بالحجاره صدق الله العظيم مسبك العلماء elders my brothers and young friends I've been asked by some of the brothers to come to your mosque here in Portsmouth to talk about um, a topic that my teacher used to talk about and talked about for over 40 years. My teacher, which I'll introduce in a minute, has been in your community many, many times. Some of you may have met him. Sadly, he passed away in 2006. His name was uh, as a Sheikh Sayyid Asad Madani, rahmatullahi alayhi. One of the great scholars of our time, son of as a Sheikh al Islam, Sayyid Hussein Ahmad Madani, rahmatullahi alayhi. For over 40 years, he came to this country from India and he went to others as well, other countries. And each year, I had the good um, fortune to take him around from Portsmouth in south, all the way up Aberdeen, north, and from the east coast to the west coast, from Liverpool community to Sunderland and South Shields, Newcastle, and everything in between, alhamdulillah, um, I had a, a good fortune to take one of the greatest scholars around um, in this country. Whenever he went to a community, like the one here in Portsmouth, I don't know if you can uh, understand my English. Is everybody okay with English? Because I can't speak Bangladeshi. <laughs> so I'm afraid you'll have to. So everywhere he went, he spoke about two important things consistently. First, Islam, self-rectification about our heart. And he used to remind us about our duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the heart's capacity to not only understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but to grow to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala following the ways of the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and some people used to give allegiance called baya and through that bayt he used to give them dhikr, azkar, remembrance so that through those extra remembrances the heart would go softer the ruhaniyat would increase knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would increase love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would increase love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would increase wanting to follow the ways of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would increase and he used to put that in his program about Islam self-rectification, spiritual rectification and he used to say many things. He says, <coughs> O oh people, don't you know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent you down on this earth? Have you forgotten your reasons? And he used to remind us. He says, the main reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you here is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, because of our uh, attractiveness to this world, our business, our work, 
our families and all the things that surround us we seem so involved in these things that remembering Allah was sometimes part time and sometimes not at all so our shaykh used to remind us that the main reason Allah SWT has uh, sent us and created us is to worship Allah SWT and is to help us by giving uh, bayans, reminding us, giving us some uh, zikr to do, etc. <coughs> Last he visited this country was in uh, just before 2006. And in the Ramadan of 2006, he used to spend his uh, Ramadan in a place called Delban. Straight after Ramadan, um, he went to Delhi and on his way back he, um, uh, he actually reached Delban, he had an accident and through that accident he, went, he fell unconscious. I went to see him straight after and for three months he was in a hospital, very um, in a, uh, unconscious in the hospital. All the doctors came, all the nurses came. Hazrat Mawla Sallallahu was unconscious. Then one day, he got up, he woke up, and the doctors and nurses came. And I heard it straight from the doctors and nurses that something happened that they couldn't understand. Through his whole body, they could hear the voice, Allah, 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 Allah. And he breathed his last and he passed away. Three months of unconsciousness, got up through his whole body the doctors the nurses the people could hear only one thing Allah 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 and in that stay he he passed away this is recorded in the hospital's history <laughs> this is what the doctors uh, noticed and heard with the others and this is no different my brothers some of the great awliya some of the great scholars in Islamic history have traversed this path Soften their hearts, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Quran says, sitting, sleeping, standing. Hazrat Ibn Abbas was saying that. And they managed to achieve that status. So our Shaykh used to remind us about this important duty for us to do our rectification, self purification, <laughs> purifying our hearts so that love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes more real in our hearts becomes much more endearing in our hearts so that when we're doing our salah we're doing salah with true love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you feel it in your hearts and he did that but I haven't come here to actually talk about that because that is for great scholars to talk about but I thought I'd remind myself and our, uh, my friends here what our great scholar is to do the other thing that he used to